Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under, under God, God and it is also liberty and justice for all. A uh, moment of silence for our troops and for those people who are oppressed across the world. Thank you. Please be seated. and Lackawanna County taxpayers uh, will continue to have their uh, their forums with and interviews with the uh, candidates for various parties uh, throughout the county. Uh, this is our first this year, uh, this spring, because of the fact that there's a, that's a mayoral campaign and the four Democrat candidates will be interviewed tonight uh, and uh, Republican Democrats, come on in, Mr. Johns. Uh, we'll be uh, interviewed uh, on May 14th. Okay, I I have to confirm that with them yet. I'm having a hard time. But people don't have cell phones anymore. They don't know what more phones in the telephone. Their names aren't in the telephone books. <laughs> so, uh, I want to say uh, meeting minutes. Uh, Doug Miller, uh, we have a the. the uh, it's CBD, right? And which we'd be able to use, so we could continue with that, right? Yes. And Treasurer's Report, Bob Jones, you have it yet, Bob? Pass it around? Yep. We just passed this Treasurer's Report around to get approval every meeting. We don't read it to the public. I got one here, you got one, Bob? Yep, I have one. I have a printout here. Apologies, I had to park in uh, Archfall to get here. <laughs> <laughs> Archibald Pothole? Yeah. It's really congested downtown. This is $400,000. Yeah, that's, it was 400000 yeah, I know. We lost hundred grand. I don't know what's there. Buying lottery tickets. <laughs> <laughs> you get a motion to approve the uh, Treasury report. Make a motion second, second. Yeah. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. Mm -hmm. Our first candidate tonight is Mr. Lee Morgan. Uh, Lee is going to be uh, the first candidate, and we're going to have like half hour intervals for each candidate, 637. to 7. Joe Cardamone will be second candidate, 7 to 7.30. 7.30 will be Bill Courtright, and 8 o'clock will be uh, Elizabeth Liz. Randall, okay? Uh, we want to start off by, uh, Mr. Morgan, maybe you can give a little background about yourself and then we'll, we'll go from there and ask some questions, okay? We'll ask you some questions and then if you want to field some questions from the committee, you'll do that, okay? Okay, sounds good. Okay, so. Um, yes, my name where, is. Where you're from and where. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, my name is Lee Morgan. I'm a city resident, uh, born and raised here, um, long time uh, council participant. Um, Vice President of the Tax Group. Um, also uh, really involved in a lot of issues um, involving uh, city and county and uh, just almost every issue uh, in the community. I just pretty much keep a pretty low profile on everything, just paying attention to a lot of things going on. And um, the only um, meetings I actually show up most times uh, publicly are um, the Grand Council meetings but uh, I pay a lot of attention to everything going on in the city. And um, that's about all I have. Okay, thank you. Uh, our first question, okay, first what we did is we sent out an email to the people and asked them if they wanted input on the, uh, on the Taxpayers Association to send in their, their uh, input for the questions or whatnot and called. And then we're gonna have questions from the floor. First question is, uh, Mr. Morgan, what is your financial plan for our city uh, uh, for the financial action year you take if you're elected in 2014 to ensure Scranton survival and begin the recovery process? Um, well, I'd like to say, Ozzy, that that's why I gave out these handouts today. I hope that um, everybody would look at them on my Facebook page at uh, Lee Morgan at Yahoo, at 112 at yahoo.com that's posted there. Um, the thing I've handed out today is a real recovery plan. And I think um, 
what we really need to do to, for the city to recover is uh, we have to put, is there a time limit to my question? Pardon? Is there a time limit to my question? No, no. Okay, no, I no. just saw you look at your watch. Um, well, the first thing I'd say that I'd have to do is uh, begin a process of reconstruction of the city and, um, and get my arms around the budget. Um, that would be done by bringing the five council members down into the mayor's office, sit down, discuss it, open the budget, take it apart, line item by line item, which has been discussed many times. I think that what we really need to look at is that we have to look at growth in the city. That's our problem. That's the only way we're going to solve our problem. Um, I'm fairly concerned right now that uh, we might have to fight off a uh, takeover by the state, to be honest with you, very soon, Ozzy. So, I mean, you know, I think that the best course of action would be to, uh, you know, just start to implement uh, some real radical changes and to take the budget apart, to be real honest with you. Okay. Uh, what would be your financial plan for our city in the fiscal years 14 through 17? I really have to say, Ozzy, that it's very hard to have a fiscal plan for a city that's bankrupt and won't acknowledge it. Um, you know, the Scranton Times did articles where we're 148, their, their figures are $148 million, not counting the authority's debt, not counting the $100 million shortfall, not counting the $17 million. So when you ask somebody what the fiscal plan is, we're in, a, we're in an absolute free fall. And uh, a fiscal plan would, uh, I mean, you just take a look at Ozzy at the legislation that just came through council. They're, they're spreading out the payments to the landfill over 36 months, even though they're collecting it this year. I mean, the truth of the matter is any recovery plan for this city is going to be very, very painful. Um, I think that um, political, uh, just the politics and the way people vote in this city has just hurt us so bad that um, I'm really afraid there's going to be a 50 percent or greater tax increase. So when you start talking about what's the fiscal plan, I think the fiscal plan at this point is survival. But I just, uh, I don't see any help coming from the state. I don't see, uh, I see a receivership, to be honest with you, Ozzie, if something, if they don't elect the right people. And I think that uh, in order to do that, I think they need to elect people that know what's going on in city government. Thank you. Uh, will you pursue nonprofits for pilots, that's programs in lieu of tax exempt properties? Uh, as accomplished successfully in other municipalities in Pennsylvania and in other states? I do have a plan for that, and uh, the plan is, and it's in here, um, I think there needs to be a coordinator in, attached to the mayor's office that goes after state, federal, and um, private uh, grants. And I think that there, and that same coordinator would be a nonprofits coordinator. And the nonprofits that could pay money then we would pursue that they donate money to the city. And other ones, I would ask for services. But as you know, uh, that's not going to solve our problem because the nonprofits aren't the city's problem. I, we keep talking about that as if that's the problem, and that's not the problem. <clears throat> the problem is that we have councils and mayors who have spent money that we don't have, and they've sold all our assets off, did leasebacks, did everything, and now at the end of the road, even with the last recovery plan, Ozzy, it wasn't real. None of thing has been realized. So it's just been one failed plan after another, and the voters going out voting for their friends or whoever has the most yard signs, who's ever spending the most money in their campaign. You know, Ozzy, the Scranton Times did an article, $933,000 by Mr. Doherty and $450,000 by Mr. DeBilio in a town that had no money. And we keep electing people over and over again that don't use the powers of the Home Rule Charter and determine what they're going to do and what they're not going to do. And in the end, Ozzy, the voters accept it, and we are where we are. So this is where we have to go from. This brings me to the same question you talked about selling our, uh, off our revenues. There's a potential sale of the uh, Scranton Sewer Authority. It's been reported in the media, mm -hmm. and they issued an RFP mm -hmm. uh, request for, uh, for proposals for an appraisal evaluation of its assets, okay? Do you support the sale or no, why, I, why no, not? No, and I'm, I'm going to tell you something, and some people may not agree. I think that Mr. Barrett's done a wonderful job. They waited till the last minute to, to meet the requirements by the Fed. 
I think it just points to the lack of leadership in the city over a long period of time. And you know something? We have nothing left to sell, Ozzy. We've sold everything. And I don't, agree with, I don't agree with separating ourselves, and I'm so glad that Dunmore has determined that they're going to oppose it because, Ozzie, we, we have no assets and a ton of tax bills coming. It just doesn't make any sense to sell everything you own. Okay. Uh, along those lines, do you believe, uh, would you give us uh, your thoughts in regards to uh, the mayor attending the city and, and staff attending city council meetings as you know mr doherty was only attended about two in well, I could, years i could say what i think i do um okay um i think the mayor should go to every council meeting i told that to boris today when i talked to him from the scranton times and i think that's a big problem we have i think that when you're a leader of a city especially in the trouble we're in i think the leader should the leader of our city the mayor should appear at every council meeting or every council meeting where he doesn't have a conflict and he has a legitimate reason not to be there, whether he's in Harrisburg or, or, or there's, an, uh, there's an emergency in the city which may occur from time to time. But I think we need to see somebody at council meetings explaining to the residents exactly what we're doing and stop this stuff about sending stuff up to council and then sending letters to this guy and not getting any answers. I think if you're a leader, you stand out there, you tell the people what's occurring, why it's occurring, and what the plan is. And the other thing a leader should do is ask the people in this city what they think should be done instead of just giving them bills all the time because a lot of residents have really good ideas. And when you look at the amount of people who come to council meetings and attend public meetings, they don't come because they don't think they're heard, they're ignored. They just, politicians want your vote in November, but after that they don't want to hear about it. And that's why, you know, when you law saw the state reps that were here last week and the state senator previously, more than a week ago, I didn't think that meeting was productive at all because they didn't say they were going to do anything. But when they were out there knocking on the doors or doing an election, they promised us the moon. Something has to change. Okay. Uh, what are your, your thoughts in regards to raising property tax, the wage tax, business tax? and the garbage fee in order to balance the budget, balance your budget, and meet the city's financial obligations. As you know, my, my, year, you're going to go with a deficit right now. Well, we're already short this budget. Plus, we don't have the 15 to $17 million for the settlement with the, with the city's employees by June. So, I mean, look it. We can't raise property taxes enough to meet our debts. It's just not possible. I mean, because... You know, I'll give you an illustration. This, in, in the end of March, I paid my property tax. I had one person on each side of me at the single tax office up at the mall. One person was paying last year's taxes, and the person that was paying this year's taxes, which was a gentleman, he wondered if he could tear the shed down on his property so he get a tax reduction because he can't pay anymore either. And, I mean, you just take a look at the community. What we've allowed to happen in this city is the tax burden has overreached the ability of wages to meet the tax. And then when you go out and you do unfunded borrowings, leasebacks, it just keeps piling on. And that's why I hope that you know, people would look at this recovery plan, because really, we need to do something much more radical to solve our problems. And if I may, I'd like to tell you what that is. We need to elect a mayor who's willing to go to the state legislature Okay, we're the only class 2A city in the Commonwealth and ask them to make Scranton a green technology, light manufacturing uh, zone, okay, and, and go out and use the coordinator out of the mayor's office that I discussed and look for investors and get Austin Burke involved because Austin Burke is not our enemy. He represents business. Council's the supposed to represent us. So between the council, Mr. Austin Burke, our state representatives, getting that classification, we've got to create jobs here. And I know some people disagree, but I think SAP is a great idea. I don't think that people outside the area are our enemies. We need to get jobs, create jobs, create jobs in the industrial park, create a revenue stream, create a, a living wage base, and we need to start attracting people here because a lot of homes are vacant, and a lot of homes only have one senior living in them. Their children aren't coming back. So as our community continues to just dissipate, 
What are we going to save in the end? There's not going to be anything unless we bring revenue here, jobs here, and people here. Uh, uh, one more question here, and then I'll open it up to okay. the floor here, okay? Uh, your kindness is of the city's master plan. In the 1990s, early 1990s, the city paid for a master plan from a consultant firm out of the Bethlehem Allentown area. Mm -hmm. And uh, that master plan just collects dust. Mm -hmm. If you were elected, you believe it should be implemented using the city's capital budget and CBBG. Okay, here's what I think should happen to the master plan. <coughs> With all due respect to everybody. I think the master plan that they had at that time needs to be tossed because the realities of the city have changed since then. I think we need a new master plan. I think that we need to bring people from the community forward. We need to bring the zoning board forward. We need to bring license and inspections forward. We need to bring our state representatives forward. What we need to do is we need to build a collective. We need to have our elected leaders come here, interact with the residents, have the mayor and the council put together a new plan. Any master plan for this city has to create an economic engine. We need jobs. They're not, our unemployment is 9.8%. That's not including all the people who stopped looking for work. So you can't have a city recover without revenue, and you have to create revenue. And the only way to create revenue is to make it possible to create jobs here. You can't. That's why I think that tax increases are counterproductive, because the more we increase taxes, the more people move out the city to the outskirts. Okay? And you know what? The commuters aren't the problem either, because if you go out Route 80 any morning towards New York City, 80 gets clogged. It's four lanes going to New York for miles. Those people are contributing something to New York and they're bringing something home. We need to get a different state of mind. We're blaming the Scranton Times. We've, in the past, we've blamed Sister Adrian. We're blaming everybody in this community except the voters who allow signs, mass quantities of money, billboards and television advertising to decide who their candidates are, Ozzie. And as you've sat in this chamber as well as me, We've watched people get elected to council that never spent a day. And you know, you look at the, the, um, the, the opinions that sometimes the solicitor gives to council, and I'll illustrate that. When the Scram Parking Authority was sent into receivership, you, I didn't, maybe you did it, but I didn't hear the solicitor for council tell them that that would be the biggest mistake the city could make because the city was responsible for all those bonds of that authority. They were talking about a credit card, whether Mr. Scopoletti was getting gas. I mean, it's just, it's not reality. The reality has hit us now because we went to the court. They put a recovery plan there. It wasn't a recovery plan. Judge Nealon questioned it. You've seen where it takes us. We're into it. We're short revenue. We're not paying our garbage collection fees to the landfill. We're putting that out for three years. And I, the question I have for all the residents in this city is, why are we paying $178 garbage fee in the city and the landfill's not getting paid. That just, and, and you know what, look at today's paper where they're moving money to do the bridge project. I mean, it's time for the people in this city to wake up and realize that it's more than signs and it's more than thinking these candidates are your friends. They need a plan. They need to know what's going on in city government. They need to have leadership abilities and they need to and I'll be honest with you, Ozzie, I don't think any of the candidates have it. And some of them have served, one of them has served in public office before. I'll be real honest with you, Ozzie. I think that this election is the city unions getting behind certain candidates, okay, like they've done many times in the past, the city leadership. The unions rank and file guys are just like this, us. They're working people go to work every single day. But the labor heads, they want certain things. And they're willing to play politics to get them. And in the end, the only ones that keep playing, paying for it, Ozzie, are the ordinary, everyday Scrantonians. Because to be honest with you, a city with any kind of leadership ever doesn't get in this shape, no matter who they are. We get a ton of promises. We get a ton of signs on the street. We elect them. No leadership ability. Never been in a council meeting. Never been out in a public meeting at the school board. And now they're running the show. Okay, thank you. Uh, I want to open this up to uh, the committee to ask Mr. Morgan any questions they may have. Uh, please pass the microphone around because of the fill. Make sure that it's recorded. 
Yeah, we, uh, if you're elected, will you be willing to, <coughs> excuse me, would you be willing to reduce salary, salaries of city employees, even if it means renegotiating contracts, which it probably would? $1.3 million bi-weekly payroll every two weeks in the city of Scranton is not affordable or is it sustainable. Would you be willing to do that even if it required possibly reduction of city employees, including the fire department, police department, and DPW? Um, I'm going to tell you something. There's a lot of things that people in this city want to hear. And I have to be real upfront with you. They want to hear about cutting the uh, salaries and they want to talk about cutting positions. Um, I think, in my own opinion, that we've got to do a lot of other things. I don't think we can balance the city's books by, by just going in and, you know, you want to look at people's wages, but rank and file workers, I don't know, I don't want to do what Carbondale's doing. All right, I don't want to privatize the garbage and go to an out outside source and pay the guy driving the truck 11 bucks an hour and pay the guy loading the garbage in the back of the truck minimum wage because you know something, I think that's a disgrace and I'm going to be real blunt with you to try to balance the books of the city on the backs of the employees. Now, I will say this, I think that we really need to take a good look at city government in the appointed positions of the city because I think a lot of times we appoint people and give them outrageous salaries but if you ask me if I'm going to I just, I, look at, I can't see how we can cut police positions. I just can't see it. We had a shootout up there, at the, up at the projects there in Southside. Um, you know, you're calling firemen to come to fires. I mean, I'm, I don't think it's right to expect somebody to go into a burning building and lose their life because we cut two or three positions that they really needed. But um, I'm not against the mayor taking a pay cut. I'm not against the council totally voting their wage completely away. Okay, because of, to be personal, uh, I'm going to tell you that in other communities, council members don't get paid. Okay, and you don't pay people for not doing their job. And I think we have to determine where we're going to make the cuts. And you know what? I don't care who people vote for, because that's not my point. My point is we need to change direction. We need to be honest, and we can't. Our debt is so much that if we lost all our employees, I don't think it would change our position very much. I mean, it, that's just how bad it's gotten, Bill. And, you know, if, you know, people think that, quote unquote, people in unions are making a ton of money. The unions have almost all disappeared. Um, the Teamsters are, as far as I know, and I'm a truck driver, they're almost gone. I mean, so, you know, I, I don't agree with uh, making all the cuts on the backs of the city employees. I've come in here, I've paid my bills some time to time, you know, down there in the office. They've got 10 or 15 people in there trying to pay their garbage fees. You've got two or three people running around. Well, you know what I'm against? I'm against outsourcing. Because when you outsource, the person you outsource to, he's got to do one thing the city doesn't have to do. He's got to turn a profit. He's going to give you the service. But when he hires you, he might cut your pay 25% to make his, his profit margin. I just think that we've had a lot of very poor decisions made over a very long period of time. This is going to be a very long and difficult return of this city to viability. And, and look, at, it's just the, all these, you need a plan, you need to create jobs. That's the solution to this city's problem, not going in and getting rid of our fire and police. Because if your house is burning down, you know, I don't want you to burn in there because well, of the I, fire. I didn't say get rid of them, I said make a cut. So I'm going to assume that your answer is that you're not willing to reduce the salaries. So I'm willing to look at some salaries and eliminate some positions but only on the side of the part where the mayor makes appointments. Look, and I'm not going to put somebody's life in danger because I'm going to go in there and cut some fireman's salary. Yeah, but we have firemen and policemen making over $100,000, $80,000 a year. Policemen and firemen in other cities well, that's because are not making that amount of money. That's right, but that's because we had allowed mayors to be elected by the union heads who wrote agreements. And when you go to break them agreements, then you get what the mayor got. So if you want to bring the city into a perpetual cycle of litigation, then you can most certainly do that, but it's, it's counterproductive. Our well, real answers are to create jobs. You can actually do it another way, too, and that's through, through bargaining and negotiation well, and sitting down and speaking with the union leaders without going to court. Well, I'm willing to and, do that. And, make, and, and the heads of the departments and 
and, and emphasize the fact that the city is not in a position to continue to pay these salaries because they are not affordable. I don't agree with that. But if you're not willing to make cuts in salaries, then would you be willing to make a 100% property tax increase need be to continue the city to, to function on I don't a normal day-to-day -day basis? My opinion on that is real simple. I don't think that's a viable plan either. And that's why if you read this, you'll be able to have a more complete understanding of what I believe. But I believe that our, our solutions are that we need to create jobs and we need to create economic development. We need to bring investors here. We've done a terrible job of condemning all the rental units throughout the city that we can condemn. I mean, it's just what we've done is we've created blight in our own neighborhoods for people to make money to tear the buildings down. I well, mean, and th that's just the, the way it is, Ozzy, and we're not trying to reclaim any of these buildings. What Lee is referring to is uh, he's written this here uh, piece on Lee Morgan, Mayor of Scranton, a knowledgeable Scrantonian with a real recovery plan for our city. And it'll be, you'll be seeing this around for the city. I just want to. Yeah, and they can also sure. find it at Lee Morgan. 112 at yahoo.com. Look, I can't come here and tell you what, I, what you want to hear. My 20-some years sitting in that seat watching council members vote for things they knew were wrong, just like many of the other people in this room, is, is our problem. I but really yeah. don't want to hear anything. I just wanted to hear what your opinion was. That, that was mine. I'm, I'm a voter and a citizen, so I don't really have anything to say. You're the, one, you're the candidate, so I wanted to hear what you had to say. Oh, no, I agree. And that's what I heard. Yes, is, uh, everybody's entitled. To to the, every voter's entitled to their opinion. Absolutely. Uh, D Dave, you have something to say? Uh? Um, yeah. Um, in a lot of cases, we're calling tax exempts nonprofits, and I have to object to that because, in many instances, they are profit-making institutions, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they can contribute. They just choose not to. And also, uh, there's been a lot of uh, politicking by alleged religious nonprofits, and that under the tax code is illegal. You're not supposed to do heavy politicking. I, I mean, a, a welfare baby to uh, fruition at 18 years of age, you're probably looking at $200,000. Uh, contraception you know, the medical plan, a couple pennies. So, you know, it's a choice that society has to make here. So what's your opinion on that with uh, some of these? Because uh, some of these institutions are bringing in a great deal of money. And well, they're uh, like uh, Janet uh, Evans read off uh, about 15 different, at least a dozen different uh, fire alarms sounded mm -hmm. at the Scranton University. Now, why can't they have a coordinator to tell them, with our fire department short on help, uh, to call them and tell them it's a false alarm? Why does our, our fire company have to show up there? And then they're not fined for it, or they're, they're supposed to be a fine. So what's your opinion on that? My opinion on nonprofits is that there will be a nonprofits coordinator in the mayor's office. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to nonprofits. If I have to look at it, I'll be up front with you, I'll go myself. But I'm going to look for nonprofits that are capable of giving us money, giving us some money. Okay? And the ones that can't give money, I'm going to ask for service. Um, you know, here's the thing that gets me about local politics. I'm going to be really up front. A lot of the money that's going for development to nonprofits is coming right through this council. I mean grants, all kinds of stuff. So I mean, how can you with one breath say that they're the problem and with the other breath give them money? Well, it, act, it actually hasn't been this council. It has been prior with Sherry Panucci and... and uh, I think the Scranton Lace Project was partially nonprofit too. So I mean, look, at yeah. the real problem here is in, when you're a leader, you've got to step up to the plate and show leadership ability. You can't turn around and badmouth the people you're funding. And that's the problem we have because nobody seems to realize the vast pool of poor Scrantonians there are in this city. And when you start talking about massive tax increases, it's just not doable. And what are the other solutions? Well, we've got to create jobs and we've got to create a revenue stream. And that's why, if you read this plan, 
It's laid out there. You know, it's really hard to articulate a plan to somebody. And look at I've compressed it. I just think that the best way to turn this city around for once is to listen to the people, hear what they have to say, and try to work with them. Okay, what we've got to do is we've got to stop allowing the city's public union heads to decide who the mayor is. I mean, if, if you take a look at this council, look who they have as the city clerk. There's, in my opinion, there's something really wrong with that. Now, maybe some people won't agree. I think it's really wrong to play it to allow politics to have taken us where we are. And Ozzy, that's my opinion. I'm not against the firemen. I'm not against the policemen. I'm not against DPW workers. But look, at the union heads got to take their heads and their hands out of our elections because just because you can put somebody in office you can get something for, from, we still have to pay it. And over an extended period of time, when you start talking about wages, Bill, and everything else that's tied to it, that's where it came from. One mayor isn't going to turn that around. You're not going to turn that around in four years. The way back for this city is going to take a decade or two to just do it because okay. this debt isn't going to disappear. Uh, I don't want to cut you off, but it's, uh, the half hour is up. Uh, we appreciate you coming here tonight, Mr. Morgan. Appreciate Let's the opportunity. Our next uh, person to be interviewed is Joe Cardamone, and he'll be on his way in a moment.